They call it the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Model. Now I have a number of thoughts on this laptop. I have some things that I love, some things that I don't like too much, and then we're gonna get into my overall thoughts about if this laptop might be right for you. So make sure you stick around for the whole video so we can cover the full context of how I feel about this laptop. Now, the model that I am reviewing is the i7-12800H with the RTX 3080 Ti, it's 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Now that is DDR5 at 4800 megahertz, so this laptop definitely packs a punch as far as RAM is concerned as well. Now first and foremost, where I wanna start with what I love is definitely the performance. Now this laptop not only has great performance, but it also does it in a very cool and quiet manner. Now jumping right into 3D modeling, that's where I would say that this laptop stands out the most. It has almost the top of the charts on every single 3D modeling benchmark, even compared to the Asus ProArt Studio Book, which is built for 3D modeling. It has that workstation GPU and workstation CPU. So if you're a 3D modeler looking for a light, well-built laptop, this would definitely be a hot pick for you. Now, as we move into After Effects, you can see that we still have amazing performance out of this laptop. In fact, it is one of the highest After Effects laptop performance I've seen on my channel so far. And even as we move into Photoshop as well, that tops the charts on the highest laptop I have reviewed for Photoshop. So this new i7-12800H combined with that RTX 3080 Ti is a great pick for both After Effects, Photoshop, and 3D modeling. Now, what about video editing? The Razer Blade 15 does well in video editing, having great export times on the different thermal modes. However, one area that I was a little disappointed by was the battery life video editing export time. So basically, you unplug the charger, you're on the go, you're using your battery power, and you're exporting a video. It took about seven minutes to do that. Normally, a laptop of this performance usually is around the high threes to low four minute range for an export time on battery power. Now, the one area that I was really impressed by would be playback. This laptop had zero drop frames in B-RAW, which I have yet to actually see on my channel out of a laptop, so really good there. And then for red footage, we saw 1,557 drop frames, which again is a close record breaker on my channel. So if you're editing higher resolution footage, this laptop has what it takes, and that's at full quality playback in the timeline. So 4K is gonna be not an issue at all. If you're a 4K video editor, you got no problems with this laptop. It's gonna handle it very well. Now, one area that really stood out to me was the fact that the thermals remain low and the fan noise remain low as well during these different tasks. Now, keep in mind, if you're pushing your laptop hard for a 4K or 6K export, you're gonna see those 52 decibels of fan noise at about 78 degrees Celsius. But if you are just kind of cruising through Photoshop or doing playback, you're gonna see only around the 40 decibel range and you're going to see about 72 degrees Celsius. Now keep in mind, depending on the fan mode you use, you may experience some heat on the top of the keyboard deck near the screen. Okay, so that's where a lot of the thermal management is taking place. What's happening is the razor blade is taking the heat from the CPU and the GPU and it's pushing it into that thermal management chamber. And so the top of your keyboard deck can sometimes get a little hot. Now keep in mind, if you go ahead and switch it to boost CPU mode and high GPU mode in your razor Synapse center, you can really eliminate that because the fans kick up a little bit. It really cools the system very well. But I noticed on some of the other fan modes, it was kind of doing some more throttling of the fans. And so that chamber would get pretty hot. So just keep that in mind. If you want to run your laptop cool to the touch, I would go in CPU boost and GPU high because that'll make sure the fans are really circulating that air and getting that heat out of your laptop. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Model, you can head down in the description below and click one of those links. Now, if you do use that link to make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, the next thing I wanna rave about is the build quality of this laptop, okay? What you're buying when you're buying the Razer Blade 15 Advanced Model is the entire package. They make more affordable laptops with just as much performance, but what you're gonna miss out on is the full package, the 360 hertz refresh rate, the 100% sRGB color accurate screen, the all aluminum chassis, speakers on the top of your keyboard deck, this fantastic glass trackpad, and a very nice clean minimal keyboard that feels great to the type. And if you wanna know what that sounds like, here's a quick sample for you. And if you wanna hear these amazing speakers, here's a quick audio sample of the speakers.
So what you're experiencing is the entire package from Razor Blade, okay? That is a positive, but it also could be a negative if you're on a budget. But really, if you're looking for a premium laptop that has great performance, this is a fantastic model. Now let's talk about a few things I don't necessarily love about this laptop. First and foremost, I would say the thermal management on balanced and silent mode. Because it's pushing all the heat away from the CPU and GPU and still keeping the fans quiet, a lot of heat builds up in that thermal chamber. And what it does is it makes it the keyboard deck feel hot to the touch. If you switch it over to the high or boost CPU mode or high GPU mode, it then forces the fans on and cools the system until it's no longer hot to the touch. But if you're using a lot of computing power, say in Photoshop, After Effects, or video editing, and you're on one of those silent or balanced modes, your keyboard deck is gonna get kinda hot. So just keep that in mind. Now the second thing would be the battery life. That was a big disappointment. I expected more out of the 80 watt hour battery. While web browsing, uh, doing productivity tasks, it was about seven hours. While streaming YouTube videos, I think we got down to about five hours. And then for Photoshop, it was just over two hours. And for video editing, it was just under two hours. Now that's on the silent mode, doing the best we can to get the low hertz rate of the screen. I bumped the screen down and it just still could not get good battery life. And for me, having such a nice on the go friendly package, I mean, it's thin, it's light. I mean, to me, this is one of the thinnest and lightest razor blades I've ever been able to review. It's, it, it, I mean, it looks great, look at that. But it doesn't have great battery life. And to me, that was disappointing. Now, the next quirky thing for me was the trackpad. Sometimes when I was click on the trackpad, so, you know, I use two fingers on the trackpad a lot of times. So I'd be going and then I would go to click. And when I would click, it would like make the mouse move somewhere else. I guess just the touch sensitivity or the tracking was a little off on it. because so I used two hands to click through things. And I don't know, it just didn't always hit where I expected it to hit. This might just be my model, but it was a little bit of a, what felt like a software glitch in the trackpad. It didn't happen all the time, but it would occasionally happen where I would be trying to click on something and then my mouse would kind of like bounce away from where I was trying to click. Again, could just be a cork in this model, could be just a cork of the software, but it was just something that annoyed me a little bit throughout the review and I didn't want to leave out that fact. Should you buy the Razer Blade 15 Advanced model? If you want fantastic performance, great build quality, upward facing speakers, a wonderful typing experience on this keyboard deck glass trackpad, then yeah, it's a great buy. If it fits in your budget, I would definitely go for it. I just think it's one of the best built Windows laptops that money can buy on the market right now. Links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you want to miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.